Okay, good evening everybody and welcome to the final March Monuments Week 4 series. Tonight it's the first of the sportives. There's one this evening. Uh, there's one tomorrow, the same time as the race. And then the final sportive will be on Sunday when they cover the same terrain that the races cover on the Saturday. It's a bit of a poor show tonight. Uh, there was some mix-up over the scheduling and uh, extra time has been requested for tomorrow's race because uh, the long course will probably take more than the scheduled three hours. Tonight though, it's uh, 74 kilometres, or well, just short, 73.7. So 74 kilometres are quite lumpy. So I'm expecting it to take, uh, yeah, round about the three hour mark, I would have thought. Uh, the front runners, I'm saying front runners, there's only a couple of riders here at the moment. But uh, yeah, the uh, I'd expect it to be round about a three hour ride. And I'm not going to sit here with uh, such a poor turnout for the whole ride. However... <coughs> I will jump in and out, I will cover it, um, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll leave the, uh, I'll leave the cameras rolling and uh, the live stream going while I take a break with my family and then I'll come back at various times during the broadcast and, uh, and see what's, what's happening. But, it is a little bit disappointing when we get to the final weekend of the series to see so few people supporting it. That being as it may, it won't stop my uh, my being pleased with how the series has uh, panned out. It's uh, We've had some cracking racing, some really good riding in the sportives and I'll be doing highlights program uh, this next week for both the sportives and the races. So you, if you don't fancy sitting through the three hours of coverage uh, that we've had every weekend, uh, I'll try and condense that all down into reasonable size chunks for you uh, when I do the highlights. Not yet sure exactly how many. Uh, programs I'll do. It all depends on uh, how much footage I end up with when I decide to cut and splice and pick the best bits out. And in terms of the racing, there are a lot of best bits. Um, the racing was absolutely stunning. Uh, really good team tactics on week one. Uh, not so much so week two and then last week uh, team Tactics once again came to the fore and uh, some really good racing and a surprising result last week as well. Um, not surprising in that I picked the winner but the manner in which uh, he took the win was quite startling. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you haven't seen the, uh, the videos I suggest you go to my channel and take a look because... Uh, they're well worth, well worth a view, both in terms of learning about racecraft and team tactics, and the action itself was pretty, uh, pretty stunning. Anyway, um, I'm going to have to jump on the bike to make a start with this ride. Um, I won't obviously be taking part. I'm still full of cold, but I will, uh, I will cover the event, and I will. Um, jump in and out during the evening and see how the riders are doing. I'm hoping that they can stay together as a little bit of a group and then it will make uh, commentary a lot easier as commentary is going to be broken up during the evening. Anyway, I'm going to jump on the bike and spin the pedals. Um... 
that's sufficient to, uh, to keep me in the game and now we'll uh, we'll concentrate on uh, on the ride now it's not a race but uh, as I keep hammering every uh, every week these sportives are treated like races by uh, the riders want to wanting to finish first so expect some uh, competitive riding tonight and it's really nice to see that uh, four of the riders have already formed a small group up at the front I'm going to work my way through them so we've got Talbot out front we've got Guru we've got Corbo who's the regular and then we've got Kratins just bringing up the rear at the moment and then obviously Davidson is just off the pace but uh, looking at the wattage he's putting out I think uh, there's a good likelihood that he's going to uh, pull this back now with this format I have to jump on the bike um, every 30 minutes in order to stay in the event that's just the way that the spectate mode works you have to uh, you have to be a competitor you have to get on the bike and uh, and actually ride so um, I will be I like I say I will be popping away but then coming back to um, the coverage each time I uh, I set my alarms oh somebody else was just, just joined as well the rider that you just saw let's just see if we can find him there we are so Astar has joined late. Now he's going to have a bit of a job catching that group in front if he even attempts it. Could well be that uh, he's just going to settle for settling in and riding on his own. But we'll see what happens. Because there's lots of time. You can see from the profile. It's a pretty, it's a pretty tough course. So my guess is that... Um, and it's nice to see uh, the fifth rider has caught this group. So basically you've got these five riding together and then you've got uh, Asta. We'll keep an eye on the distance, but if you look at it, it's pegged at 160 at the moment. Uh, whether he decides to put in an effort and try and close it, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm just going to... Um, I'm just going to set up my uh, my alarms now and uh, let's so just bear with me while I uh, I go quiet for a few minutes set up these alarms so what time we need okay so plus Okay, so I've set a few alarms which should remind me I have to uh, climb back on the bike to continue the coverage. Let's see what's happening with uh, this, this small group. They will stay together at least uh, up until they get to this first climb. So I'll stay with that and we'll see who's together once they, uh, once they get over the top. 
This is quite a tough little ride. There's, uh, I think there's just short of a thousand meters of climbing uh, in this 77 kilometers. So, uh, was it 77 or seven? No, 74 kilometers. So it's, uh, it's not an easy little course this. And obviously, oh, and there we've got another late joiner. So this is nice to see. Uh, riders coming in. And Asta, of course, is... Uh, now, the really good thing here is Marty, this rider here, uh, who's a late joiner, has joined in front of Asta. And Asta, I think, will catch him and they can ride together. And then there's a possibility I mean Asta's really working hard here look at his wattage so there's a possibility that uh, if Marty does work with Asta they could close the gap on the uh, on the front group but Asta's really putting in a good effort here to get back um, to the front so that's nice to see Now it should be mentioned that um, James Ogilvy, um, the creator of this series, uh, he will be riding in tomorrow's race. So although he put his name down for tonight's Sportive, I didn't expect to see him. Um, that would be a little bit too much because uh, he'll have all on tomorrow um, with the race. It's 99 kilometres of hell tomorrow, almost 2,000 metres of climbing. And uh, we've actually asked RGT for an extension to the uh, time limit so that uh, everybody can, uh, can finish. There you go, he's caught Marty. So now hopefully these two will work together. I'll just check on them and see whether Marty gets on his wheel. And hopefully if these two work together, there's no reason why, especially given how hard Asta's working. Um, I mean, look, he's going red there with numbers. So, yeah, he's, he's really pushing hard here. And thankfully, I'm glad to see Marty is working hard on his wheel. Hopefully, we'll be able to take a turn um, and help Asta get back to that front group. But already you can see the gap coming down. It's almost 100 metres and it's coming down even yeah, they're going to get back. So this is this is really good. Oh, come on, Asta, don't give up now. Yeah, he's just letting Marty get to the front. So hopefully, as I say, these two will uh, will work together. I'm just going to message actually, and Okay, so has he, um, yeah, has he dropped Marty or is Marty just in front of him? Let's have a, let's spin the camera around. There's nobody behind. Oh, and you saw another late starter, Guru, there. I think, well, at least I think Guru. You've got Wally. He's another late starter. So who have we got? We've got, we've got Corbo up the front. We've got Davidson. Yeah, they're on the climb now. That's why they're separating. So you've got Davidson following. Now, Corbo is quite a strong rider, so I'd expect to see him pull out a little bit of a gap on the climb. But it makes sense if they stay together. Uh, you can see Talbot chasing. And, and there we go. Who's that that's just gone past? We've got Talbot. Guru. Now he's a late joiner, I'm pretty sure. Um, Kratins, yeah, it's all coming nicely together here. Another late joiner, Page. Hopefully he will be. Able, he's putting out decent wattage, so he will be able to close the uh, twenty odd meters to the guys in front and join them. And Wally has just started, but he's looking like he's 
Oh, I don't know. It's, his power numbers just doesn't don't look good. One watt kilo. That's yeah. He's mind you, he is on the slope, so perhaps he is taking it easy. But uh, he's not going to catch the guys in front with that kind of wattage. So, but Page is. Page will close up the gap with a bit of luck. Needs to do it on the climb though, because if the crest the uh, the climb without him then it's unlikely that he will uh, he will catch and who's that at the side of the road that he's just approaching now is that let's have a Metz so Metz is yeah he's another late joiner so Metz is joining the action and you can see he's joining the group this is all good stuff I mean yes the late joiners but you know th this um it didn't go into the app until reasonably late and uh, with the problems rgt have had um <clears throat> various members uh struggling with the update i've been watching the forums and every time there's an update it seems that a few struggle um the social ride that was meant to take place tonight was uh, they weren't able to get into it at least when I last checked, so uh, hopefully RGT are sorting that problem. But they're on the climb now, they're joining together nicely. Let's zoom out and find out where everybody is. So you can see that, uh, I'll, I'll see if we can get an overhead shot and then that gives you a better idea of where everybody is. So yeah, the riders aren't that far apart. Um, On a slightly easier section now before they hit the next part of the climb. Like I say, this is it's a tough course um, today. This, uh, although it's only short, uh, there's no respite from the climbing. There's, uh, this is the kind of course that really would have suited me. But uh, I'm f still full of cold folks, and I. Uh, I haven't ridden for almost two weeks now and I don't think I'll be riding this weekend. <coughs> I'm absolutely, uh, my chest feels like it's on fire. So it just makes sense to stay off the bike until I manage to clear up this cold. So let's work his way back and see what's happening further back, Metz and Page, and then Astar. I expected these guys to have, uh, and Kratins, yeah, uh, to have closed the gap, but uh, maybe they're finding it a little bit more difficult on the climb. But we've got a nice, oh, wait a minute, is it, was that the front that I've just, oh, my, my bad, that's the front. I was thinking it was a group further back, but no. Okay, so Asta did get Page. Who's that? Who's behind Page? Let's No, I think this is the lot. This is everybody. So let's find a view that works, see if we can get through the trees. There we go. Now what do you think? Are this group going to stay together or do you think it's going to separate a bit uh, in this early part of the ride? I mean some some of the riders have made a really good effort to close up the gaps. So uh, I've got a YouTube live chat going so if you do want to comment um, don't be afraid to do so. I'll answer um, I'll answer all comments in uh, in real time. It's too early to be uh, picking out riders for the finish. I won't do that until we get at least to the halfway point. I mean, I've got my eye on uh, who I think are the strongest riders in this group. And we'll see how they perform.
Also, the canny uh, regulars amongst you may notice that there's been uh, some nice changes to the interface, my streaming interface. I've made a few upgrades and uh, <coughs> I'm thinking it's looking a lot better. In particular, if you look at the riders in the rider list, you can now see the colours, uh, the coloured bars changing colour. I've managed to get that on screen. Um, we've got the bounding box, obviously, with my team colours. Um, and then we've got the nice uh, the nice scrolling text at the bottom where I can put uh, I can put the details about the ride. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> like I say, this uh, code is taking some shifting. So uh, yeah, a bit bit of an upgrade and more to come. There's more uh, there's more work going to be done this next week. Um, Certainly in terms of cameras and this lot, um, I'm I'm going to be uh, improving um, the camera angles, certainly when riding myself anyway. Um, let's see if we can find the riders though, we've lost them at the oh there we go. It's always difficult when it's a twisty course trying to uh, trying to view the riders through the trees. You have to sort of swing around and try and follow them. Whoops, that's a little bit too high. There we go. So Metz is making a bid for freedom off the front. It's not a serious bid at this point. He's just probably uh, stretching his legs. But if he gets a big enough gap, obviously he may well keep it. But I, uh, I wouldn't have thought. Uh, yeah, he's actually he's actually said what I thought he was doing. He says, "Don't try to follow me. I'm just going to go hard for a few minutes." So Metz has actually announced that he's uh, he's just wanting to uh, stretch his legs. My guess is he will, once he's done that, he will ease up and uh, the group will come back together. It's too early in the ride at this moment in time to uh, to go for a break and to ride the horse, you know, the whole um, route on your own. I certainly wouldn't want to do it anyway. But he's putting out some good numbers. A good effort here, but how long is he going to keep this going for? Let's see what the group are doing behind him. Oh, Talbot. Uh... No, let's come on. Oh, there we go. Talbot's at the back. So <clears throat> this is the. Uh... This is the group and they're currently sort of like 300 metres behind him. But they will close the gap. He'll either ease up or this group will just, you know, slowly but surely pull him back. He's, I don't think he's making a serious break for it. And he announced that for them not to chase him, which tells me he's going to sit up and let them come back. <clears throat> And this is the first of many climbs, so there's no rush to uh, to show your strength on the climbs if that's what you're good at. There's a really steep section towards the end of the ride. It's very short, but it's uh, also very steep. Let's, uh, let's work his way back and see how riders are doing. Asta, Marty. Now those two joined up earlier together and nice to see the staying together. Kratins just coming to join them. And then Paige and... I mean they are on the climb so that's why you're seeing gaps. 
appearing at the moment, Davidson and Cowbo. Because I would normally expect Cowbo to be further near, uh, up near the front, but uh, like I say, it's, uh, it's it's very early. And then Talbot, his last man on the road, if you discount me, uh, I just have to be in the ride in order to cover it, but I'm not actually riding. And there's a fair gap appearing there, so I don't know whether Talbot um, has just decided uh, he's having none of it and he wants to just ride his own pace, or whether he'll put in a bit of an effort later and try and uh, try and pull back the small group. But at the moment, he seems just content to ride his own pace, so the gaps uh, the gaps going to go out because obviously these riders in front of him. Cowboy Page and the rest are now cresting the climb, as you can see from the slope in the top right of the screen. So, because they've uh, and now crested the climb, they're going to be picking up speed and opening up gaps on the riders further behind. What you've got to try and do so that you're not pushing too hard um, as you go over the top of the climb is you've got to try and and just put in that little bit of effort before you get to the crest because uh, if there's too much of a gap with the riders in front of you going over then there's a very high likelihood that uh, you will not close the gap uh, at least till later because once they uh, once they start on the uh, on the flat and downhill sections they're just going to ride away from you the good thing about this this first climb is if you look at the profile you can clearly see that it doesn't actually go downhill. You get to the top of the steep section and then it continues to very gently, I mean only 0.4 of a slope, but it continues to very gently go uphill. So you don't, you know, that's a good opportunity for riders to close the gap. If you got to the top of the climb and it suddenly started to go downhill or even flat, that's where you would see gaps appearing. So it's really nice to see this group working together, closing up the gaps. Let's have a look and see what's happening behind them on the road. Can't actually see another rider as you can see on the road. So this is it. This uh, how many how many have we got here? Six. One, two, three. Yeah, we've got six riders here, and that's is it six or is it seven? Yeah, six riders. So. <clears throat> It's very likely that these six riders are going to stay together now, right up until you see the next orange sections, um, deep orange sections in the ride. So I would say for at least the next 10, maybe 15 kilometers. And there you can see that they've just caught up with uh, Metz who went up the road earlier uh, to stretch his legs. And Metz will now close up to the back of them. They've, They've gone past him. I'll just there we go. There's Corbo Talbot. Yeah, Metz is just ah, struggling here to find them. Let's see if we can zoom in. There we go. So you can see Metz just hanging off the back of this group, but he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna catch the tail end of them, which he's doing now. Um and then once he's done that, he will just sit in the pack, recover for a little while. That's what I would do. Just so there he is, in the orange helmet at the back. What you don't want to be doing is closing a gap and then sitting at the back and sort of like yo-yoing. You you really. Uh, when you've closed the gap, certainly if you've put in an effort, if you've not put in an effort, then it's not as important. But uh, there's my alarm going off telling me to get on the bike. Um, but yeah, if you close a gap and you've you've worked hard to close a gap, then you should attempt to get towards the front of the group because that's the 
easiest and best place to recover. Whereas if you're at the back, there's a chance that, you know, the group just speeds up going around a bend or uh, somebody decides to put in a bit of a dig, you're going to be spat out the back once again. But uh, that's not happened here, thankfully. They're all together. I'm just going to jump on the bike so that we don't, uh, we don't get kicked out of the race. Okay. So seven riders now in this front group and what we're going to do is just work his way through them. So there. And then Corbo's, he's currently 280 metres off the back. So if you go forward, this is the front group of seven. And then Corbo's 290 metres now off the back. So um, it's a tough ask for him to close up, but they have got a, um, a fairly decent downhill section coming up. If he's a heavier rider, maybe able to close the gap. We'll see. See what happens. Brill, he's a late joiner, as you can see from the distance he's completed. If you look up the top right, it shows your distance and remaining, and you can see that he's only done less than a kilometer, just a kilometer now. So he's a late joiner, but. Uh, he or she, I don't know, I can't, is it, hang on a sec, let's have a look. Is it a she or is it a he? I think it's a lady. I think, yes, it's definitely a lady. So it's nice to see. We don't get enough ladies uh, joining the event, so uh, yeah, nice, nice to see. Let's find out who's behind. Talbot chasing. So if they can join together, now Talbot's putting in a decent effort here. He was last man on the road, but he certainly upped his pace. So he could well catch Brill, and if they work together, then who knows what might happen. Um, now, just let me switch the view here. You can see that Talbot is now on the new cobbled section. This cobble, these cobbles came out, and the rain, came out with the new skin, the, um, what's it called, um, Spring in Europe, I'm pretty sure that's correct, uh, Spring in Europe pack, graphics pack, and it includes cobbles, it includes broken tarmac, uh, windy uh, roads like you see in here, and uh, you will notice where where there is in real life where there's buildings uh, you get some nice buildings at the sides of the road as well it's a nice pack and you can clearly see that Tolbert is catching Brill my hope is that they will work together uh, do a bit of riding together Let's just zoom out a little bit so yes this is a new graphics pack and I think it looks quite nice um, for me though I could have done with a few less trees because it gets really difficult uh, if you're coming into the finish of a race uh, and like it was this last weekend on the velodrome a small circuit uh, it was very difficult for me to uh, to follow the race and she's giving Talbot a wave so that tells me she's not going to try and stay uh, with his pace yeah and <laughs> Talbot's waving back but you can see he's putting in a good effort to try and get back to the group in front. He's got a long ride though because he's not going to catch Crattins anytime soon. Crattins is uh, uh, off the front at the moment. 
Matt is following him, but uh, Kratins has currently got a 190 meter gap. So he's definitely making a, a push. But they're on the steep downhill, so the heavier riders are going to have a real benefit here. You've got Kratins, you've got Marty, and you've got Astar. Um, then you've got a couple working together, Page and Davidson. But as I say, they're on the steep downhill, so anything can happen here. I wouldn't pay too much attention to gaps. At this point, where the gaps are going to be important is as they go up the next hill. But uh, these two are looking good together, working well. So Colbo is currently the, at the tail end of the small group we saw, it, which is no longer a small group because they've split up on this downhill. And then Talbot, obviously, uh, is last man on the road, followed by uh, the, our one and only lady, S. Brill. So... Uh, <coughs> Who I think is doing well just to, uh, you know, to come into the event. I wish we had more ladies. And there goes Calbone. And you can see because they're getting towards the bottom of the. Uh, well, they've reached the bottom of the slope and they're on the uphill now. They're coming back together, which is nothing less than I expected. So, Kratins is still out front. Now, I know from previous rides, he's quite a strong rider, so um, I don't think... It, He's going to stay out front though. The gap isn't big enough and it's too early. But we'll see what happens. And in fact, it does look like he's easing up now. Just looking at. Uh, can't understand why he's, there's no cadence showing though, and no, I mean, no heart rate, I can understand. It's only a sport if they don't need to wear a heart rate monitor. But uh, I like to wear my heart rate monitor to see how I'm doing. You can tell from both the wattage being put out and the heart rate that uh, Marty is working hard here. So he's working pretty hard to pull back uh, Kratins, which he's going to do. Um, and then you got Paige following on behind. And the rest of the group coming up to them. Look, let's just zoom out and then we can get a better picture. So if I if I can sp spin it around, there we go. You can see them on the road. So they can see the rider up the road in front of them. Uh, then you've got Paige in the middle. And... Uh, Who's behind these two? Let's have a check. Yeah. Now they can't at the moment see there are any riders in front of them because of the uh, of the bends in the road. But I think if they, uh, they got to a flatter section of the road, or a straighter section, should I say, not flatter, straighter section, they probably would be able to see the riders in front of them. And we're back to Talbot. And again, if you if you look at the heart rate, that's that shows that he's working. Um, you know, I don't know what his maximum heart rate is, but one five three tells me that he's he's putting in, you know, a bit of effort. Not over the top, but a bit of effort there. So Matt is out front now with Kratins 
Um, he's overtaken Kratin, so as I said, I didn't expect... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I didn't expect Kratin to stay out the front and I don't expect Marty to either. I think at this point, everybody's just... They're doing their own rides. I mean, that's what it's about, but... Um, I do think we will see a, a small group forming again. Um, but it's not as easy to stay um, to stay in groups on such terrain as this the uh, the different abilities on the climbs and descents is obviously going to uh, split people up It just makes sense to ride with another rider if you get the opportunity to. There's no point in uh, in doing a solo ride at this stage in the uh, in the route. It's just it's too far to go to be riding all on your own, unless you've no choice. You know, quite often you can end up on your own for two reasons. Uh, the, the first reason is obviously you've been dropped by the group in front and you can't maintain the pace. And the second is you've decided that the group that you've left isn't working hard enough. So you're doing your own pace because you just don't want to ride at a slower pace that the group, like I say, that you've left uh, is riding at. They're the two main reasons for ending up riding in the middle on your own. There's an argument if somebody's coming up fast behind you to, you know, to let him catch and then try and ride with them. Uh, but there's also a good argument for not waiting for riders behind you and, and riding on. And then if they finally do end up catching, you know, you can uh, you can keep it going. <coughs> Excuse me. I do wish I could get rid of this cold. So you can see that Astar has got page in in sight he's uh, 100 meters behind and uh, he's working pretty hard to to keep the gap at 100 meters and in fact he's, he's bringing it down slightly but only slowly so uh, it'll take him a while to get there but I think he will and then these riders they're a further at almost 300 meters uh, behind Astar so it's going to take them a while to close up and then there's our last man on the road and he's well off the pace now so uh, and in no man's land because if you look he's almost 600 meters from the small group in front of him and almost 600 meters behind him is uh, Esbril. So <clears throat> Talbot's going to be riding on his own uh, as is Brill uh, for some time. Whereas up front these two have uh, joined together they're on the flat section now, but they very quickly will hit the slope. The down, in fact, 
as I speak. There we go. There's the downslope. So we're coming up to the 20 kilometre mark now with another 54 kilometres still to go. So uh, yeah, I reckon three hours uh, for this ride, given the uh, the terrain. You could see the front runners do it in less, but it won't be that much less. It's going to be around about the three hour mark. Now, as I say, I'm going to go and have myself a cup of tea and a biscuit uh, shortly. I'm going to wait until uh, the, the next alarm goes off, jump on the bike to make sure I stay. I stay in the race, uh, in the ride. It's not a race. Um, and then once I've done that, then I can I can nip downstairs and get myself a cup of tea and I'll leave coverage um, with the riders. Um, we'll have to decide who we're going to follow, won't we? But uh, are these two going to keep the lead out front? Uh, now, Jardine is a late joiner. So there's no reason why, with fresh legs, I mean, he hasn't done 20 kilometres. So there's no reason why Jardine can't close up to the two riders in front. Uh, there's an argument for not getting involved and not uh, not influencing the ride, but it's still pretty early. So I don't think it makes any difference if he does join those two in front. Which he may do, him, although it, oh, it's, he's on the downslope, that's why he stopped pedalling. Uh, Page, he's uh, he's not far behind Jardine actually, so could well join him. Do a bit. There you go. In fact, he's going to go come whizzing past. So but they could work together on this on this slope and uh, pull back a little bit of the uh, front front leaders. Yep, there we go. Basta, he's another 460 metres behind. Now you can see from uh, what happens is the, uh, if you look at the profile on the bottom of the screen, you can see that as I move through the, um, I, through the group, the white paddle shows my current view. So I'm flicking through riders working my way from the front to the back. And the paddles, the white paddle that you see uh, on the bottom is showing you where I am currently. So you can clearly see that we've got uh, these two here and then you've got Guru behind and then we've got two riders behind Guru which is Talbot and he's just onto the slope now so he's got a fair bit to catch in terms of the downhill and then Brill just about cresting there we go as I say that just crests the top so uh, Actually, there's another small rise here for poor lass, so no, she's not crested the top yet. Close to it, though. <clears throat> and these two at the front have just... They're maintaining the 550 metre gap at the moment. So... Uh, but these two are working together now. Our late joiner, Mr. Page. So anything can happen here.
And this makes perfect sense. If you can find a rider to uh, to share the workload with, why not do so? Even on the downhills, you know, if you can save a little bit of energy, then when you uh, transition onto the flat and the uphill, you're that little bit more recovered. And our front two, yeah, they, they, they're sort of like pegging the gap. You know, it's one minute it's being closed up, next minute it's going out. So the gap's about 540 metres, give or take, from the two uh, that they're chasing here. So that's not insurmountable by any means. They could, they could close that uh, if they put in a bit of effort once we start to get to the bottom of this slope. Whereas Astar has got a much tougher ask. He's almost a kilometre behind now. The two riders in front of him. So, And to, to do it on his own as well, that really would be a big effort. Whereas these two, they, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to... Who is it? It's David. Let's have a look. David Sain and is it Calbo? Yeah. So there's no reason why these two can't put in a bit of an effort and catch Asta in front of them. That's what I'd be looking to do. Saying to my partner here, come on, let's put in a bit of effort and let's catch him. Because three riders will obviously work a lot better than two. <coughs> And it looks like Guru uh, is on the downslope, but he's not pedalling at the moment, no power. Yeah, it looks like he's possibly coming to a stop or he's just taking a... I mean, he's on a 1.5, you would expect him to turn the pedals on this. I'm not sure whether he is just uh, freewheeling it on the slope. Yeah, it looks like that's what he's doing, so... He's not going to close up any gaps freewheeling, that is for sure. Um, and in fact, Talbot is closing in on him. So expect Talbot to overtake him. But then if, he's, if he stops cycling, yeah, obviously he's going to overtake him. And Brogue is also on the downhill. Currently our Lantern Rouge on the road. Yeah, and you can see here what I was saying about the gap. Um, it got down to 330 and now it's back up to 360. So it's, it's fluctuating. Um, I, I genuinely believe that if uh, the riders behind wanted to close the gap, they could do. Without, because if you look at the wattage they're putting in, they're not, they're, they're hardly breaking any records out front. And in fact, the two riders behind are putting in more wattage. So, yeah, and they brought it down to three thirty again. So they need, they just need to keep that going. If they just kept, you know, the one watt kilo or a little bit more extra, going for ten ten minutes or so. They would close this gap. Maybe not even 10 minutes. In fact, I'll bet you that by the time I've gone downstairs, had my cup of tea and biscuit and come back, I'll, I'll bet they've come back together. These two riders will have joined. Uh, sorry, not these two riders. These two riders will have joined uh, the two at the front because they are catching. They, they, they brought it down now to 250 metres. So they're definitely working to bring the front two riders back, which is good to see. Well done, Paige. I mean, uh, like I say, you've got a, uh, you've got a good work fellow in Jardine because he's joined the, the ride late. And why not use fresh legs? Although he's sitting on your wheel at the moment, he needs to come round and do his fair share. 
which hopefully will do. But Page, this is a really, really good effort. I mean, look, he's in the red, he's working hard. You've got Jardine on his wheel, and he's brought the gap down tremendously. I thought it would happen after I had my cup of tea. It's going to happen before. Because these these are coming back together in another minute or so, and they're going to be all back together. That's a great ride, and well done, Jardine, for coming to the front. And keeping the pace high as well, yeah. Good legs. This is why I love commentating on these kind of rides. I mean, you know, you, people might say, well, <laughs> what pleasure can you get out of watching just a couple, a handful of riders? But uh, when you see... When you see tactics and uh, riders working together, it's quite nice. And because I've got so much experience, uh, both riding and uh, in real life, um, commentating on uh, on races and rides, I have a good clue what's going on on the road virtually as well. So it's not difficult to call out the action and uh, I'm actually quite proud at being able to uh, to call out winners on a regular basis uh, in much bigger fields as well, purely and simply because I can uh, I can tell who the strong riders are just by watching what's happening on the road. <clears throat> and that comes with experience. there's the catch well done so now you know just uh jardine's going off the front but they they need to ride together now i suspect jardine will not uh, continue to ride off the front i suspect he will he will ease up and <coughs> they will ride together for a while but at the moment that's not what he's uh, he's doing you can clearly see he's opened up a thirty metre gap, but I do think I do think they'll ride together for a while. Um, Jardine up in the pace has just managed to drop um, Page at the back, which is a little bit sad because Page did the majority of the work to bring these two riders back, and then Jardine just shoves up, shoves off the front with his fresher legs. And Page has got dropped. Now I'm hoping, I'm hoping he gets back to these because it would be really, really unfair if Page pulled Jardine to this group and then got dropped himself. And that's the way I'm reading it. That's the way I saw it. Jardine did some work on the front, but it was Page that did the majority. So I'm not enamoured with. Uh, with Jardine's tactics here. I really don't think that was a nice thing to have done. But there we go. Yeah, page has dropped. <laughs> I'll bet he's furious. I'll bet he's thinking, yeah, okay. Thanks, mate. I pulled you along and now look what That's always, the, just to explain, that's always the most dangerous time. When you've made the catch, you know, if <clears throat> if you make the catch and one rider, either one of the riders that's made the catch or one of the riders that you've caught, puts in an effort um, to jump off the front, that's the most dangerous time because you're absolutely knackered from the work you've just put in. And... Uh, It's often the time when you will get dropped. Now, more um, more aware riders will make sure that when they're making the catch, they're not giving it, you know, 110% purely and simply because uh, they're, go they're going to want to leave something in reserve for when the catch is made, just for this exact scenario. So a clever rider just wouldn't, you know, wouldn't kill himself. And there's my alarm going off again. Wouldn't kill himself to close a gap. 
but there's time yet for it to come back together. I'd expect to see Page. He's not going to let this stand. I'd expect to see him uh, joining these riders again. Hopefully, anyway. That's what I want to see. Uh, it looks like we've had another new join on the road, Bradley. So, a little bit further behind. Okay, I better jump on the bike and spin the pedals around. And then I'm going to go for a cup of tea. So I'm going to leave you with these front riders. So let's switch to drone view while I'm uh, while I'm away and then what that's going to do is that's going to uh, that's going to stay with Jardine but can can I actually zoom out in this view I don't think I can will it uh, there we go Okay, folks, I'm uh, I'm away to have a cup of tea. I hope the uh, I hope the cameras will pan round and stay with the riders for you. Uh, I'm currently on Jardine, who's leading it out. Um, I don't know as I can. In fact, I'll tell you what. Let's uh, let's see if we can get a third per. A third person view like that now will that will the trees obs obscure when he goes around the corner let's just check on that now it looks like the camera is following the, the contours I'm saying that then and we're in the, in the trees. Okay, let's. Okay, I'm going to try that view and just hope it works for you. Okay, that's me.
Okay folks, I'm back. And I can see that Jardine is still working off the front, so let's catch up with the action. Um, let's see if we can... Uh, we can swing the camera around. There we go. And see what's happening behind. So we've got these three riders. Can we see anybody else? No, we can't see anybody else behind on the road. You can clearly see all the way down the road there and there's nobody behind. So let's work his way back and find out. Harrison's a late joiner. He's less than a kilometre into the ride at the moment. So uh, we can discount him. And there's poor old Paige who got dropped from that front group. He's not letting them go, but uh, I really feel for the guy. And there's Aster. Now he's working hard in the middle of uh, of two groups on his own. So uh, that situation could change, but at the moment he's just out there on his own. You can't actually see the riders behind him, even though they're only 400. These riders are 470, uh, 480 metres behind Carbo and Davidson. So, possibility of them coming back together? We'll see. And then you've got Talbot, who was last uh, man on the road. Now it looks like Brill, there's, there's Bradley, I don't know what's happened with Bradley, but it does look like, just going back, Talbot's last man on the road because it looks like the lady, Brill, has, uh, has packed in, which is a shame. I really would like to see the ladies uh, take part and finish the ride. Because we need more ladies in these events. But anyway, Talbot's plugging away. And then these two are fair way in front of him, so... As I say, Aster in the middle. So the battle really, um, when I say battle, because it's not a race, but trust me, those at the front will be racing it. Um, <clears throat> the battle really is the next riders on the road, the, uh, not Harrison obviously, but uh, so Marty, one of the three has been dropped at the moment on, on the climb. He's just getting towards the uh, the top. So Marty's been dropped by the two riders in front of him, Jardine and Crattins. But uh, there's no reason why they can't come back together. But we're getting towards the uh, towards the halfway point now, and that's the time for maybe somebody a rider to decide to make the break and uh, the solo break i mean crattins is working really hard here uh he's actually done as you can see 35 kilometers whereas jardine has only done 16. so he's done more than twice the distance of jardine but jardine will probably do him over uh like he did to page I mean, I'm, I'm hoping Crattins can leave Jardine, and in fact he's trying, I'm hoping he does leave him on the road. But fresher legs may well mean Jardine has got the edge. We shall see. He's certainly trying to close the gap now and not let Crattins get away. And sure enough, goes straight on pass. So. No, he doesn't. No, he's slowed. So you can see that Jardine has got a plan here. He's he's more than happy to let the other rider sit on the front. Do the work and then try it and drop them. I 
maybe I'm being a bit unkind because that's exactly just what Crattins has just tried to do to try and drop him. But maybe, maybe Crattins is saying, I'm not going to let you sit on my wheel. You know, I've done more kilometres than you. You shouldn't be sitting on my wheel. I should be sitting on yours. If they take turns, then not a problem. But that's not what I'm seeing at the moment. I'm, you know, I'm I'm seeing Crattins come to coming to the front and not really pushing the pace up at all. So therefore, and he's dropped out. Now is that a drop out or has he just decided he's done enough of the ride? In which case that sucks because he got rid of Page with his tactics and if he's just dropped out that is out of order and I'm calling it as such to come into a ride push up high pace and then just drop out when you've yeah I'm sorry that's just that's out of order because he's totally you know Paige was in with a shout there's the halfway point. So Crattins has gone under the halfway point. Page is a further two kilometres behind him now, thanks to uh, Jardine. And I, I, I'm I, calling it out because it's, it's totally inappropriate behaviour. I know it's only a sportive, but hey. Anyway, that's what makes me such a controversial figure. I tend to speak my mind. I'm a Yorkshireman. I'm allowed to. But there'll be many, many riders who will agree with my my vision of how you know ethics should work in cycling. And I just think that uh, there's certain things you don't do. So Crattins is going to push on. He's opening up the gap. You can see he's, he's you know, he's, he's on the downslope, but he's still pushing out three watt kilo. So he's not hanging about. He's, uh, it's not a race, but he's definitely going for the win here. And he's chosen the right time to do it as well. You know, if he can, if he can get this gap going out. <clears throat> even more on this section of the ride then he should feel fairly comfortable when uh, when it starts to uh, go uphill again and he's almost got three kilometers well let's 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 have a look behind him obviously you've got marty um he's had a good ride but um <clears throat> he's a kilometre down now possibility of closing the gap but I don't know too soon to call that one and then you got Paige and Paige is really for me he's been a true workhorse um, who got shafted Oop. I don't know what's happening here with the because uh, I went from page and it's, it's thrown me okay so let's there's page and then we've got Corvo and Davidson so yeah that's showing correctly on screen and then we got Talbot and it looks like Bradley has managed to make a start as well so um, you can see from his kilometres done, he's only done 0.19 of a kilometre, so he's a long way to go, but at least he's, uh, he's rolling now. And there's no problem with riders late joining, um, you know, providing the, uh, they play fair. So Crattins is really, uh, oh, we've got another rider and a good rider in Clays. Now, he's a very strong rider. 
Um, he's done a late join. Now if he does, it doesn't look like he's going to do at the moment because they're on different parts of the slope, but if he closes up with crattings and works together on the front with crattings, then uh, the gap to the riders behind will grow out, will grow out even more. So <clears throat> I'm kind of uh, kind of hoping that he doesn't catch crattings out front. And then Marty, um, he's over a kilometre behind uh, the rider that's just joined his place, so this rider. But he's not on the steep downhill yet. They're just still working well. Now we could finish much earlier than I expected, to be honest, if we're, if we're at the halfway point, 116 gone, then yeah, there's no reason why we can't do a two and a half, uh, a two and a half hour finish, which would be really nice. I mean, I expect the people at the back to be uh, taking a lot longer than that, but uh, we'll see how the coverage goes. These two are staying together, which makes perfect sense. How but poor fellow has been on his own for quite a while now and is likely to be so for quite a while. I don't see Bradley catching him, Bradley's just uh, so I think Talbot is more than likely to stay on his own. So these are the only two riding together at the moment, and they've uh, they've done a fair distance as a team. So and Paige is still pushing out the watts despite going going downhill. It is working hard if you look at his wattage and he is actually closing up he's closing up the gap now this is going to be interesting because let's uh, let's work his way forward you see Clays is, is now caught up with Crattins which is going to influence the ride um, there you go now you, you can see that in fact, let's get it from another angle. Let's get it from this angle. There we go. So these two are going to are going to join forces and push out front. But Clace has only done like three kilometres. So that's a bit unfair on. Um, I mean, that's riding for you, but that's a bit unfair on Marty, who's. Uh, trying to close the gap behind because if these two join forces the gap's just going to grow and in fact Clays by by pushing the pace like he's doing is actually pushing Kratins to stay out the front as well so both these two riders are working harder than they would I think uh, So we're interested to see what happens. Is he going to ride on past him or are they going to work together? Yeah, he's going to get on his wheel. Yeah. 
Okay, so now the the metric to watch now is to watch the gap to Marty, and I expect to see it grow. Which it is doing. See, I, I I don't have a problem with late joiners, but I, there's my alarm. I I do think it's a little bit unfair that late joiners can influence the riders that are going all the way. I mean, in a racing situation, this doesn't happen, but this, you know, to some of these riders out the front of the, a ride like this, this is a race. Um, and I just think it's... I was brought up in a different era, so uh, maybe I should stop expecting people to work by my standards. Okay, let's go. Let's let's take a look back and see how Marty's doing. There he is. I'd really like him to make the catch because he's certainly putting in the effort. So let's keep an eye on him and see whether he can uh, he can pull back any of this. Uh, it's actually going out slightly, but uh, that could change as they get to the downhill. And it is between, excuse me, it is between these three now, without a doubt, as to the first finisher. I mean, you can't really call if, if Claire's do come in first finisher, you can't really call him so because uh, he's only done a fraction of the distance that the uh, uh, Crattins and Marty will have completed. So the the ride, really, or I, let's call it what it is, the race. Is really between Crattins and Marty, and let's uh, let's see what happens. Let's uh, let's hope Marty can close up the distance, and uh, and he is doing. He's he's closing up, and if he closes up and uh, makes it a two or three horse race, I like to see. Uh, A bit of an exciting finish. Okay, I'd better jump on the bike then, I suppose. In the pedals again. Now, what's happened to uh, Marty? Has he uh, has he dropped out? Has he? Oh, it's just crazy. He just yeah. It looks like he's dropped out. That's why it flicked to me. That's why the view flicked to me because he dropped out. <clears throat> so we've got seven riders left in, including myself. So six riders left on the road. Um, can't believe I'm sitting here for the full broadcast <laughs> with six riders, but hey, it shows commitment. 
so if you're watching this stream folks please give me a like um And also, if you haven't already done so, you'll notice that I've uh, I've added um, our sponsor to the uh, ticker text at the bottom of the uh, screen, and that's Tom Cycle Clothing, Tom CC. If you haven't already done so, check the website out. Um, they deserve support from the riders because they're supporting the series. And the clothing is quite honestly, it's uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, you'll get a chance to see me wearing it uh, this weekend. I won't be riding, but I will be wearing it here in my studio. So I'll be showing it off. So it's, uh, it's not so much about... Uh, watching the riders finish now it's more it, it is definitely now a two horse race so because bradley's last man on the road but to be fair he's a late joiner and if you look at his pace and everything else uh, the whole uh, demeanor he's just uh, happy to be on the ride i don't think he's uh, he's trying to catch anybody on the road because he's just too far behind so you've got talbot in front of him putting out a uh, fairly much higher pace and Talbot's just going to have to ride on his own because he, he knows he's not going to catch these two in front of him they're three kilometers away so he's basically just riding his own ride which is you know the right thing to do it's just a shame he's having to ride it all on his own um, these two are doing the sensible thing and staying together because it's a long ride when you're on your own and then <clears throat> we have our leaders and of course don't forget that Clays, um the Belgium rider he's he's the strongest of these two I feel um, I've seen him I've seen him riding before and racing before and uh, he's a very strong rider so if this if these two stay together then i expect him to uh to cross the line first but what you have to remember and i'll highlight it just so you know if you look at uh clay's now you can see that he's done 8.59 kilometers whereas if you look at kratin's kratin's done you know another 40 kilometers more he's done 48 kilometers so there's no real fair comparison between these two you can say yes Clace is a stronger rider as he rides off the front but Kratins is you know putting all the work so I'm certainly hoping that uh, Kratins takes the win now it does look like the paddle uh, it's just yeah the you can clearly see that the paddle isn't working um so what i'm going to do is go into the gui and turn it on and off so um the elevation map is going to disappear for a moment there we go and now it's working again so there's a tip for you folks if uh if you find that uh, the uh, the little white paddle that shows where you are on the profile isn't updating simply turn the uh, the gui full elevation map on and off and it will usually it doesn't always but it usually fixes it and the same can happen with uh, with the other metrics in the menu like for example the uh, the chat can often <coughs> freeze up oh it certainly has for me so i i just turn it on and off and that usually fixes the problem okay so clays is now sort of like opened up the 40 meter 50 meter gap on crattins and giving me a wave so i don't know whether he plans on riding the full ride or not 
Uh, if he does, then he just wants to ride on his own out the front, which is not a problem. But um, Kratins may well have something to say about that. I don't know. And here he is, in fact. So it's Kratins that's actually taken over the uh, the lead, but uh, I guess these two will stay together for a while. I don't see either of them really pushing the boat out until maybe maybe when we get uh, if you look at the profile, you can see that short, steep red section, and that could be the place to make a break if you're going to do so. I'm just sad to see so many people dropping out of the ride. Now, um, I could be doing some of the riders a disservice. Maybe they're having technical problems. But, yeah, for a ride of this nature to, to only see seven riders online, it's a bit sad. For me, it is, as a, as a commentator. Because this has been a f fantastic series. It's been a cracking... Um, you know, the way that uh, Samir, Samir's Magic Roads has digitised these courses. Um, you know, we've we've had um, Paris-Roubaix, we've got Liège, Bastion, Liège, we've had um, <sighs> Escapes, we know the name of the other one, but... Uh, yeah, we've had we've had basically the classics over the four weekends and it's been fantastic. I'm really looking forward to the race tomorrow because that's going to decide the series and uh, it should be quite exciting. I'm hoping all the main contenders um and that's Turcot um It'd be nice if my teammate really showed up and rode it. Um, who else? We've got the German. Oh, my, my, my brain is just... This cold has fogged my mind and my head because I just can't think at the moment. I've got a stinking headache. But, yeah, um, he took the win. What do they call him, the German, that took the win on last Saturday? So he's in with a shout of the overall... Um, if his team can do what they did this last week um, and work over Maxime Turcotte, I mean, he, uh, he finished sixth in the race, mostly thanks to the team tactics of Rassio Racing. Um, Decker, that's, that's the name I was looking for. Um, so Jan Decker was, uh, was absolutely amazing. He took the win and closed up on the points. So... I haven't looked at the standings at the moment, but I imagine it's all to play for on Saturday, tomorrow. And if you haven't watched the uh, the previous races, I really would recommend you do so, because uh, pretty amazing stuff. Some really, really good team tactics, showing how, it, you know, how to take an advantage when you've got more members in a group how to work a rider over. So really good team tactics, but really good racing as well. Some some clever racecraft. So Clays has opened up a 300 metre gap almost. Yeah, there we go. Um, so he's pushing it out at the moment. Kratins is not even trying to close the gap at the moment. So <clears throat> Kratins behind is just, you know, it's just steady away. On this section now and you have to remember that he's done 40 kilometers more than the rider that's uh, riding away from him in front so he's the leader on the road at the moment the true leader on the road 
and then these two riders they've stayed together for a good portion of this ride which is very clever riding and nice to see as well and don't forget this is second and third placings up for grabs here um, <clears throat> I think Corbo is the stronger of these two riders, but I don't know. Davidson, a bit of an unknown at the moment. Tolbert. And Bradley, his last man on the road. Now, just to add, um, <clears throat> as well as the improvements I've made to the interface of my feed you, know, you can clearly see the changes um, I'm also going to be improving the coverage itself by having an in-camera view so you'll be able to uh, see me in my studio giving commentary and talking tactics like I do now um, but that will be improved greatly because I'm going to be uh, keeping a profile folder on the riders and the races I cover and I'll slowly build up the profile uh, by making notes on this lot against riders I'll take some information that already exists from the likes of IGT uh, DB uh, details of the riders so I will be able to give better commentary uh, going forward on the different races and series that I cover and that will help me with the ta team tactics and with the race tactics as well I, when I say to you I think such and such is a stronger rider I'll be able to back it up with figures um, because the majority of riders will um, will use a heart rate monitor the majority of riders that are racing will <clears throat> and the information uh, on their race finishes is freely available so I'll be able to compare the wattages etc uh, you know the watt kilogram that they came in on uh, when taking part in races and it will give me an idea who are the climbers who are the rollers who are the uh, who are the big sprinters and that should help with my coverage of these events so I'm going to be putting in a lot of work uh, to do this because I I really want to grow the channel I really want to um, become one of the premier uh, broadcasters with RGT and Swift I might add I, I haven't given up on uh, my Swift coverage uh, the only thing there is I would need to uh, I would need to be invited back to Swift um, because I can't at this moment in time um, justify the cost of full membership again. I just don't spend enough time on the platform but that that could well change as my channel grows and I start doing more coverage but if RGT keeps growing um, and improving the way it is then I see my future uh, staying with RGT and maybe just covering uh, um, their races and events and sportives too soon to know now but I, I really need to uh, I really need to get more subscribers so if you haven't already subscribed please do so help me grow the channel because the more subscribers I get the more time I can devote to growing the channel if I'm not going anywhere if the channel isn't growing then I can't um, I can't go to my partner and say look I need to spend uh, X amount of time doing this in order to grow the channel if they, we're not seeing any growth so 
So please support the channel, please subscribe if you're not subscribed and hit the like button, that always helps. <clears throat> also, um, I'm going to be able to put um, chat on screen as well. So Okay, yes, um, I fixed it. So I'm just in, I'm just in the, uh, in the YouTube chat now. So if you want to leave a comment, please do. Uh, I'll try to respond as, uh, in real time. <clears throat> I've got Anne Nagayan um, in the chat at the moment with me. So if you'd like to leave a comment, if you'd like to give your thoughts on the commentary. I mean, it's a bit difficult today because it's such a, um, a small field. And really, we're only looking at the two riders now, um, you know, riding into the finish. Probably got another 40 minutes to go, I would have thought. Uh, possibly yeah 40 minutes should should see us home so it's it's been a bit of a poor turnout today and it, and that's a, that's a shame for James uh, who's put in an awful lot of work and I'm interested to see here you've got Davidson looks to be um, yeah he's, he's called it a day so Davidson called it a day so we the only riders we have left now we've got five riders left um, if you don't count me, we've got Claire's who's uh, making a break out the front and he's going <coughs> to, by the look of it, finish first. But he's not the true first finisher. This is your, this is your first finisher, Crattins. And then Cowbo is also doing the full distance. He was riding for long enough with Davidson, who's now uh, pulled the plug. So you've got. Uh, Kratins has done 55 kilometers with 18 to go and then you've got uh, Calbo he's done 51 with 22 to go now I shall wait and, and catch the riders coming into the finish those that are riding the full distance and that includes Talbot who's got 25 kilometers to still to ride but I, I, you know I'll get him coming into the finish because that's only fair if he's uh, if he's riding the full distance, the least I can do is get him on the road. Uh, and he's looking good as well. And Bradley, he, now he's a late starter and he's got 31 kilometres to, to ride. I won't stay with Bradley after Tolbert comes home, I'm afraid. Purely simply because he's a late starter and I, if I... You know, if I joined everybody that joins up on the ride towards the end, um, I'd be sat here all night. So, but I am going to, uh, I am going to see the riders that are doing the full distance home. And Tolbert obviously is one of the three left now on the road. So you've got Tolbert, you've got Cowboy and you've got Crattins. So they're, the, they're going to be our one, two, three in that order, providing they can all finish up. And I really, really hope they can. I mean, obviously, Klaus is going to, uh, unless he pulls the plug or he decides to ease up, he's going to, uh, he's going to be the first rider home, but not the first rider who's completed the full distance. And that's how I measure first, second and third. So <laughs> I'm sorry, Klaus, but... <laughs> You can't cut it if you join late, mate. A couple of kilometres, yeah, you know, if you're late to the party and you join, having ridden a couple of kilometres, I can understand. But to... Uh, and there I am, look. And I need to uh, make sure I jump on the bike. Shortly, so that I don't get kicked from the ride. I don't know whether I set another alarm, but we're getting near the finish now anyway. So I'll jump on the bike shortly.
Now then, it looks like it does look like the uh, the GUI is frozen once again. So what? Once there's my alarm going off. So what? What I'll do is once again I will turn off the uh, elevation map. There we go. And then we'll turn it back on. And yes, you can see now that uh, Mr. Clays is getting to the top of the climb. So yes, it's working. Let's page down and watch Kratins climb it and let's jump on the bike and then I'll, uh, I'll check the YouTube chat once more. Okay, so let's move back in the ride. <clears throat> now the nice thing is that we've learned that I don't have to switch views. I don't have to switch to myself. You can see Kratin's on the really steep part of the climb. I'm going to stay with him because I want to see what percentage this goes up to. We saw an 8% there, but I do think further up it gets much, much steeper. I think more into the uh, the double figures. So I'm going to stay with Kratins on this climb and check my YouTube chat at the same time. So, yep. Another change that I've made is uh, I'm running a dual monitor setup, um, which I think is just needed for um, if you're doing this kind of live stream. It's so much easier when using OBS Studio if you can uh, preview the scenes before going live which you can do so and also if you can you know like I'm what I'm doing at the moment is I'm able to look at my YouTube feed uh, which tells me it's in excellent condition um, but also the messaging I'm able to do the messaging um, and also if I need to make any changes like you saw in real time me make the change to the text uh, and I added our sponsor, Tom Cycle Clothing. Well, I was able to do that in real time, but obviously you couldn't see me doing that change until I uh, transitioned it over. And uh, that's only possible if you uh, if you have like the two monitor setup which I have here, and you can keep all the windows on screen. It's very difficult to do if you just have the one monitor set up. <clears throat> so I, I saw that really as a necessity um, because I want to grow the channel, I want to grow the streams. Um, but the other thing I've managed to do is I posted a question at, uh, this is quite this is quite interesting. I posted a question in the RGT Cycling Users Forum asking whether anybody had managed to uh, find a way of putting the RGT chat on a separate monitor. And the replies I got was basically uh, to to try mirroring. Well, yesterday I managed to find an app. Um, well, let me just do a search and see if we can uh, see if I can find it while we're watching Kratins just going up this climb. Let's see if I can do a search and tell you the name of the app that I uh, I managed to find. Um, wait a second, where are we? Yeah, uh, it's called ISO Recorder and it's by A Power Soft um, 
a company called A Powersoft. So I got it on the uh, from the web, and what this does is this allows you to mirror your iPhone to any TV or any monitor, and uh, and then you can see. Uh, and you can resize the window that it gives you so you can basically have it on screen which I do um, on your second monitor <clears throat> along with the YouTube chat along with the uh, OBS uh, studio so basically you can uh, in real time you can see the chat uh, and it doesn't go away unlike the um, you know the chat on screen now you can see it's just the chat has just arrived on screen now and it hasn't changed for quite a while because nobody since Metz has posted a message but I can see that all the time on my uh, on my screen so I can respond in real time to chat but I can also you know update as I'm going along and today that hasn't been so much of an issue because nobody's really been using the chat we've only had so few riders online and now that Kratins has finished let's uh, let's see what's happening lower down the slope um <coughs> so yeah you've uh, you've got the facility now to be able to use that app and uh, and mirror the uh, the chat and I can now follow you know I can follow YouTube chat I can follow the uh, RGT chat and it's going to be really crucial when doing the um, I'll just answer my YouTube um, so yeah it's going to be really useful tomorrow when I do the race coverage being able to follow the chat being able to interact with it because it's very difficult when I'm trying to do commentary and it's appearing on screen and then disappearing and I'm having to try and look at my small iPhone um, you know to see the chat whereas um, the the app actually gives me oh yeah, what's happened to Corbo oh dear let's hope he's not has he what's, we've got place out front but what's happening behind us Kratins, Tobit Oh no, another one is finished. Now I hope he's he's just decided he's had enough and he hasn't had a technical. But even so, it would have been so nice to see him finish. This is a real, oh, what's the word? Um, hard ride. And we're seeing a lot of people dropping out, which is a real shame. So who else we got left? We got Bradley is last man on the road. Okay, so Bradley's got 25 kilometers to do, but he was a late joiner. Then doing the full distance, you've got Tolbot. And he's got 21 kilometers still to complete. But like I say, he is doing the full distance. And then you've got Kratins. He's on uh, he's on another slope here. And he's got 13 kilometres to go. And he's done the full distance. And then you've got Clays. Now Clays has only ridden 20. I'm saying only. That's a good effort. 22 kilometres with 11 to go. So he's going to come home first. He's two kilometres uh, and more in front of Kratins. So Claes is going to come home first, but Kratins will be the true first finisher on the road doing the full distance. But sadly, we won't have a one, two, three because Talbot is the only other rider. So there's only two riders at the moment doing the full distance. OK, I need to just jump back into the YouTube chat.
Okay, so I'm just I'm just uh, answering, and as I say, you're going to be able to see the YouTube chat. I'm going to uh, I'm going to have it so that it, it appears on screen as well. At the moment, um, it's on my second monitor, and I'm responding in real time. But there's only two of us. There's me and Anne. Um, <coughs> from one of my favourite countries. I, I think you're from Vietnam, aren't you, Anne? Um, I visited uh, on my round the world tour Vietnam and it was one of the most beautiful uh, parts of my whole cycle around the world. I spent two and a half years, folks, cycling around the world uh, when I was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, not only did cycling around the world save my life, but it allowed me to see parts of the world, you know, that are just absolutely amazing. And uh, Vietnam was one of them. A wonderful country. Very, very close to my heart. And, and to be honest, there are very few countries where at my age now, if I was given the opportunity, I would return to. Um, but Vietnam is one of them. Uh, up there with Canada. I loved Canada. Uh, that's where I met Hilke, my partner. Um, we fell in love there. So Canada is a special place in my heart, but so is Vietnam. And yeah, I, I really would like to go back with the children, but... I don't know whether that will ever happen. So we're getting close towards the end of the ride. And uh, as you can see, Kratins is uh, He's going to, uh, he's putting in some good wattage here. He's going to uh, finish the full distance, as is our friend Mr. Talbot. So there's not much, there's not much in it. Um, you've got Clays has got nine kilometers now to the finish. So he's well out in front. In fact, he's pulled, he's pulling out a huge gap now. But you have to remember, he's got fresh legs compared to... Uh, compared to this fellow whose legs are going to be hurting after all that climbing. The the GUI at the bottom of the screen, um, if any of the uh, RGT folks drop in on this stream and can hear me, uh, it needs looking at folks because it's been doing this now for weeks. Uh, almost every single broadcast I'm having to shut down the GUI and put it back up on screen again, um, purely and simply because it's uh, it's failing to update. So I'm turning it off and then back on, and you can see now it's working because if I if I go to the front, you can see Claire's where Claire's is. And if I page down, you can see where Cratins is. So there's a good distance between the two of them. Um, I will follow Claire's as he comes into the finish, but I can't rely on watching the profile map. I really need to uh, to do it manually, to go back to the front and watch, because he's got seven and a half kilometres to go, and I will I will definitely get him coming into the finish. The lad deserves that for riding uh, the sections that he has ridden. Like I say, I'm just a little bit, a little bit miffed that not more people have uh, have stuck with it, or not more people joined in the first place. So eleven kilometres for Cratins, Talbot eighteen, and then I'm done. Uh, although I I might wait for Bradley if he keeps on at this pace. He's not that far behind. It's always nice to sort of like watch riders come over the, the line. And although he's not done the full distance, he's still putting in a really good effort here. So 
Yeah, I'll probably stay with you, Mr. Bradley. And uh, let's have a look at what shirt you're wearing. In fact, it's time. Yeah, we haven't done that today. So he's wearing the Ravid shirt. So who are the who are the main sponsors? Let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can spin round and see what else is on his shirt. Ah, it's not text. Okay, and which bike is he riding? Okay. <laughs> it looks like a single speed look. There's no gears at the back. So he's on a single speed. Okay, let's change. Let's, let's go and have a look at Talbot and his bike. So who's he riding for or with? Oh, is this power coaching? Let's have a precision coaching. Sorry, let's have a look. Yes, it is. So this is precision. Um, they run a really nice race series. Um, I wanted to cover it last night, but I, I, I was not in any fit state. I'm really struggling with this, uh, with this cold. So yeah, they. Uh, And he's riding the Argon, uh, is it the Argon 18 bike, as you can see. With full disc, let's have a look. Yeah, full discs, you can see. So you've got the full setup here. Disc breaks a lot. So that's precision. Let's have a look at the next man. And this is my favourite bike. This is the ride, and it's the same colour as mine, the yellow, the yellow Evo. I love this bike and it, it stands out as well uh, when I'm leading rides. So, um, Italian white road. So, let's have a look at you and, and see what it says on the back of your jersey. Well, who were I? Um, actually, He's on quite a lot of the jerseys. I was sponsored by Wahoo when I did my uh, when I broke the Swift distance record at the Euro Bike Show in 2016. I broke the Swift distance record with uh, 1,600 kilometers in 52 hours. So there's a target for you uh, endurance athletes. And it was beaten by shortly afterwards by my good friend, uh, one of the best endurance riders out there, Chris Hopkinson. They call him Hoppo. And uh, he took the title off me shortly afterwards. <coughs> <coughs> okay, and last man, let's let's have a look at. Uh, your man here and see what what bike he's riding so no discs on this one so this is just a re your regular bike with your cantilever brakes um, I don't know the bike mate is it a Ridley yeah it's a Ridley so I'm not familiar with Ridley bikes I know they're in very good quality uh, giant on the jersey what's on the back there let's have a look Oh, let's uh, let's see what's on the top. I do love this for I mean, I, 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 I Bora. I do love this um, above and beyond cancer. You do for me, mate, as a cancer survivor. That's good. I mean, I uh, I, I like the ability to be able to do this with the software that RGT have provided. Uh, it's streets ahead of Swift's uh, race coverage software. They can't do this. They can't uh, sort of like pan around and uh, like we can here and watch the action. It's absolutely stunning, especially when you tie it in with the drafting dynamics, a, a real life drafting and braking. Um, really is fantastic software. I have maybe one or two gripes with it and that's I wish they would give me the ability to be able to click 
in the rider list and actually select riders from the rider list. I mean, that would be just heaven instead of having to use the keyboard to uh, to move between riders. Because sometimes you can lose where you are. If it's a large group, you can lose where you are in the group by using the keyboard to go up and down. And sometimes it'll flick to a second group and you don't even realise it's done so. So to be able to click on the riders would be really, really useful and really helpful. But that's for the future. I mean, that's a small gripe. Um, you can see from the way that I'm panning around here just how good the software is. Um, and the only other thing from a commentator's point of view I'd, I'd like to see is the ability to be able to cover events without actually needing to take part in them. Because having to jump, and in fact I need to do so now, having to jump on the bike every 30 minutes um, is a little bit frustrating. Um, sometimes, like I've done at the moment, I've forgotten how long it is since I last jumped on. I don't think I've got another alarm set. So I'm now just jumping on to make sure that I'm not kicked out as we come into the finish of the race, uh, race ride. It's not a race, it's a ride. So there I am, I'm on the bike, spinning the pedals to make sure that uh, I don't get kicked out of the event. And I'd really like RGT to give me the ability to be able to uh, cover the events without having to do that. It would just make it so much more pleasant, so much easier, instead of having to constantly remember to, uh, to jump on the bike. And what I only realised this last week was somebody told me was that I don't, in fact it was James that told me, I don't need to um, show myself on the screen when getting on the bike. I can simply look at my, uh, my iPhone app of RGT and see the power and cadence there. So I can actually stay with the action, which is what we're doing here. Oh, we've got a late joiner. Now then, is Maurice going to... <laughs> Look at the wattage he's putting in. So Maurice's plan here is to join the party late and maybe uh, maybe overtake the rider at the front. In fact, the rider at the front has, has packed in. He's gone. So... And I suspect he's done that deliberately because he doesn't want to appear as first rider. So, full credit to you, Clace. That is really nice um, of you t to have done that. Sadly, we've got Mr. Morris who's jumped in and he's going to show us first finisher. Even though he will have only done five kilometres, which, well, six kilometres, which is a bit off, really, but never mind. So Kratins is actually our first finisher on the road. He's got seven kilometres now. And look at him pushing out. The, you know, he's done 66 kilometres and he's still pushing out the uh, the watts. And then you've got Bradley. He's last man on the road, Lantern Rouge. But he's coming home. So you've got Talbot with 15 kilometres. So I, I'm going to I'm going to cover every rider home and the rider that you saw join the join. He must be listening to me because he's he's decided. Nope, I'm not going to stop the first finisher from being actual first finisher. So well done. It, it, they must be listening to me, you know, because Clay's I think uh, realised that he would be first finisher without doing the distance and pulled the plug with only a couple of kilometres to go, which is a really nice gesture and something I admire a great deal. That's the kind of, uh, yeah, behaviour I, I like to see in these kind of rides. They don't have to do it. They can, you know, they can join right at the very last minute and finish first. But I just think it's a little bit unfair on the riders that have done the full distance, you know, really work their butts off and they really deserve to be shown as the first finishers 
and sure enough Crattins is going to be six kilometers to go he's on the last bit of a hill and then it all gets much much easier so this is his last slope as you can see from where the paddle is I think the paddle is working at the moment let's check on it yes it is so you can see it's showing in real time where Tolbert is and he's a good way behind you know we've got almost eight kilometers difference here but I'm gonna wait I'm gonna wait for Tolbert to come home he's speeding along the road and I'm also so we wait where's Bradley there's Bradley and I'm also gonna gonna watch Bradley come home as well because he's only a couple of kilometers behind uh, Tolbert while we're watching Bradley, let's just check the YouTube chat again. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I didn't plan on doing this tonight. I didn't plan on staying with the uh, with the full commentary like I've done. I mean, I had a short break at the halfway point. But apart from that, I'm, uh, I've done the full, the full broadcast, which sort of surprises me, given how many riders we've had. So well done to all those that have stuck it out and are finishing, these three riders on the road. Full credit to you. So you've got Toll, but he's just going to be approaching uh, the next red section. He's on 5.2% at the moment, but it does uh, it does grow a little bit harder than that. And then what I think I'll do actually is uh, I think I'll I'll watch Bradley as he goes up the. Uh, I planned on doing it earlier. I'll watch Bradley as he goes up the climb and see where. Where the steepest section is. And what you also have to remember, folks, is that this is the first of three sportives. So you've got the second part tomorrow. This is sportive one. You've got sportive two tomorrow. Kicks off at um, 1300 GMT tomorrow. And the race kicks off at the same time. And the reason for that is because um, the course is really long. It's 99 kilometers for the race. And the profile is horrendous. It's almost 2,000 meters of climbing. So we're going to be looking at, uh, for some of the riders, almost four hours. So RGT have allowed... Um, the normal three hours to be extended to four hours and uh, I'm going to be covering the full race the full broadcast which is going to be a pretty hard effort uh, the sportive covers the second part of this ride um, tomorrow and then on Sunday the sportive the third part of the ride uh, Liège, Bastion Liège because the sportive covers the whole distance and the third part covers the same section as the race tomorrow which is the last section of Liège, Bastion Liège and it's horrendous I've seen the profile uh, 99 kilometres as I say for some of the riders four hours of riding well not riding, racing so it's going to be it's going to be difficult now I'm covering the race Tomorrow at two o'clock, um, my time, thirteen hundred GMT, one o'clock uh, UK time. But I'm also covering the same course, but for the sportive riders on the Sunday. I'm not sure whether I'll be able to justify um, staying with the full broadcast for the full four hours on the Sunday. It depends on how many riders we get. But certainly for tomorrow's race, I'm hoping we have sufficient numbers to allow me to uh, to do that. 
So we're back to Kratin's at the front. He's got four kilometres left to uh, to complete. So good on you, mate. Really good ride this. And finishing well in front of the time I uh, I thought it would take the riders <coughs> to complete this course. I I was looking at two hours thirty. So. Uh, and even thinking three hours for the uh, for the latter riders, but that's not going to be the case. So really pleased with this ride. And here we've got uh, Bradley, and I'm going to stay with Bradley for a little while while he gets up this climb I think but I need to be I need to be mindful that I don't miss uh, Kratins coming into the finish so I'll keep flicking backwards and forwards between between the two of them Because Bradley's got 15.8 kilometres to go, whereas Kratins has only got 3.2. There's just that little, as, as you switch riders, there's just that little bit of lag for it to uh, redraw the scenery that they're riding on so initially when you uh, use the keys you see well i'll show you again you can you can clearly see it on there look it shows them riding on uh, on the moors like that until it redraws the scenery so it's just a minor a minor glitch as it redraws the scenery happens fairly quickly I don't know what it's like on other people's PCs but I'm running quite a top-end uh, graphics card here for this uh, setup <clears throat> 2 point6 so Yeah, I think it tops out, so it doesn't quite go to double figures this climb. I think it tops out at 8% at its steepest. So there's Kratins with 2.4 to go, and Tolbert's putting in a good ride. And we'll pick Mr Tolbert up as soon as Kratins has, uh, has finished his ride. Which won't be long now. I'm looking forward to tomorrow's race um, because of the uh, terrain I think it's going to be quite a tactical race you know because the uh, there's going to be many opportunities for breakaways tomorrow with the climbs and it will be interesting to see how the teams um, you know try to split the riders between the breakaways last week we had uh, two riders from both teams uh, that were contesting the uh, the win um, two riders from uh, OTR and two riders from Racio Racing. Um, so it was a fairly even thing in terms of uh, the final group towards the end. But prior to that, we had a right ding dong battle um, between the two teams. And uh, I have to say, Racio Racing um, 
took the honours in terms of team tactics and uh, and workload last week. So it'll be interesting to see whether uh, Maxime Turcotte and his team OTR can change things around this week. I'm sure they will try. I'm sure they will. Uh, they will be working uh, as we speak on the team tactics for tomorrow. And I will have all the, um, I'll, ha I'll have the points and everything to hand. I'll be making notes in the morning. So I'll have the points and everything to hand. There's the one kilometer to go banner. So, so that we can, uh, we can discuss during the race commentary uh, what's happening in real time with the standings and the position, finishing positions, because uh, obviously. I think Maxime Turcotte is a, a firm favourite, but that could change if uh, if Decker um, has a has another good finish and Maxime finishes further down the field. You just don't know what's going to happen. And tomorrow could be the kind of profile where you're not going to see both riders together in the same group. You know, it could well split apart with good team tactics tomorrow. So. I, for one, am really looking forward to it. And if you want to get a good feel for it, for what it's going to be all about, go back and watch the highlights of some of my previous videos of the three weeks racing, because the tactics were fantastic and uh, pretty exciting. So here we are, it's coming into the finish now. We're about to see the finish banner as it comes around this bend. And 2.22, that's a good finish. Well done, Mr. Crattins. Well done, sir. Okay, let's... So Talbot's got 10 kilometres to do and Bradley 13. Just over. So I'm going to stay with them. No point in, uh, in not doing so. So, uh, yeah, that was a good finish, Mr. Crattins. Um, Enjoyed watching uh, watching the ride. I'll just message actually and uh, Just check the YouTube chat as well. Oh, nothing happening there. If you are watching the live stream, please consider um, leaving me a comment in the live chat. Let me know what you think of the broadcast. Uh, also, what you think of the uh, the new uh, graphical user interface I'm using for the stream. I think it allows you to see a hundred percent of the. Um, the RGT screen. You can even see the colours changing with the uh, with the riders on in the rider list. Uh, you know the coloured bars, which you couldn't previously see. And uh, I really like the way that the ticker tape works along the bottom because it means that I can uh, call out the race organisers and the sponsors, which is what I'm doing at the moment. We're sponsored by Tom Cycle Clothing. Um, they're going to be offering spot prizes to the most combative, the best team, uh, the best work or effort, etc. And those will probably be decided when I do the highlights programs. Not sure yet. Paul hasn't spoken to me about how he's going to determine the prizes, but he is going to give a, be giving away some spot prizes for the best riders during the series. So 
I can see from the, my YouTube feed that I've got two likes at the moment. Now, come on, folks, that's nowhere near enough. You know, I should be uh, I should be getting more likes than that for this kind of a broadcast. I I work really hard to cover these events. So support me by giving me a like. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing as well. Uh, we need to grow the channel. So it's down on this, as you can see, the really steep downhill. You don't need to pedal for this bit. Just let uh, let the wheels go. 72 kilometers, 73, 74. Yeah, he's really hitting the uh, KPH on this downhill. Can he, can he reach 80? I don't know if he's listening to me. No, probably not. Ooh, yes, hey, <laughs> obviously this need to be because he hit the eight day. Well done, sir. Well done, Mr. Tablet. There we go, got another like. Thank you very much. And somebody else in the chat as well. That's a TV. <laughs> it's a... I love being able to live chat with people. It's um, it just adds that little bit of extra uh, interest to the to the stream. So, you know, con consider chatting with me, folks. Obviously, um, I, I, I Twitter away um, with my chat, but there's even more to chat about when, we, when we're doing the racing. I mean, I try to give um, good pointers during the sportive rides, but during the racing, um, I can speak from experience and... Uh, Although I say so myself, you know, I've been um, I've been involved in cycling for more than fifty years as an organizer, as a racer. I mean, I've done I've done everything. I've done track. I've done um, <clears throat> MTB, cyclocross, um, endurance. You know, you name it, I've done it. Uh, <clears throat> my racing partners back in the day. Um, training partners should I say were elite riders so I I've had and I've led rides out in the Pyrenees and the Alps um, taking my own groups out there as well as Spain so I, I've got a wealth of knowledge when it comes to cycling and that's why I really feel like I can I can talk with authority 
about race tactics and about um, what's going on on the road and so that's why I want to get into this broadcasting and uh, and covering races and events because I might as well use my knowledge and uh, and give the viewers you know a good experience but in order to do that I need to grow the channel so um, please help me, me do so by subscribing now then yeah the race is going to be hard Okay, so we've got another six kilometres with Mr. Talbot here to uh, to complete. I'm busy chatting away in the uh, in the chat with uh, is it Mihai Talia, who's doing the race tomorrow. So he's just telling me. <clears throat> and um me he is telling me that um he never finished the sport of the full 280 kilometers of the uh, liege bastion liege um, and neither have I. I I've never actually uh, ridden it. I've ridden sections of it, but I've never tried to do the full thing. I have, however, done the full 285 kilometres of uh, Paris Roubaix with all the cobbled sections in. <coughs> I did that way back in the early 2000s and uh, and got the gold standard. So. Um, I and I remember I don't know if you um if you can recall when Trek brought out the uh the carbon bikes um back in the early Lance Armstrong days but they brought out the the white one with the blue um highlights on and that's the bike I rode uh Paris Roubaix on and I had special wheels built for it um instead of the normal racing wheels i i got some special ultra lightweight uh but strong 32 spoke wheels built just for paris roubaix uh so that i could ride over the cobbles in the uh in the big ring and uh it was an experience i'll never forget i still have the wallet that, that you get for with the uh with the picture of the rock on the front the cobble on the front and I still have that to this day it's one of my proudest possessions um, yeah one of the best rides of my life that a truly great day out um, other really good sportive rides of note that I've done uh, in Europe were the uh, I did the uh, the Marmot and again got the gold standard and at the time I rode the Marmot, I, I was I was taking a group. I used to do cycle coaching um, and take groups out to the Alps and Pyrenees and uh, and to do things like the uh, Etape de Tour. And on this occasion, I had two guys that wanted to do the Marmot, so I trained them for it and took them out there. And uh, I was going through my cancer treatment at the time, so I'd just come off the back of uh, chemo. Um, I was really, really ill. I hadn't been able to keep food down or anything for about two weeks. And I was really ill. And um, I went out there just to take the guys out and not planning on riding at all. But, you know, as the event got closer and closer, and I'd already stuck in an extra spot anyway, 
because we were supposed to have another rider join us and he never did. So I'd already got the extra spot and I decided to ride it just to see what would happen. And uh, I don't know where it came from. I, I rode out of my skin, um, managed to finish the course with a gold standard. Um, and that's possibly the best ride of my life um, in terms of, you know, the sportive type events. Because I, I came from nowhere, from not being even able to ride properly to ride in an event like that. Um, yeah, <clears throat> that really inspired me. <laughs> yeah. So I, I've done I've done lots and lots of riding in the Alps. I mean I, I, I've got the medals somewhere. I posted a picture on my website, but um I think I, I in total I did something like six La Tap de Tours. Uh I did a Marmot, um I did a mountain bike tour from switzerland across to across the border the swiss alps i do i've done a lot of riding in europe i i i used to go out on the training on the graham baxter sporting tours training camps with my good friend paul dixon and matt armitage two elite riders from yorkshire so oh sugar da 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 oh, a sec no I'll rejoin. I'll rejoin in time. There you go, you see. That's why I wish we had the ability to... Uh, to not have to get jump on the bike. Anyway, it's rebuilding the roads. I'll, I'll be back with you in a moment, guys. This'll... Uh, this'll get me back into the event. And then we'll rejoin. But um, yeah, I, I've I've ridden all over Europe and particular in uh, in the Alps, in the Pyrenees and in Spain uh, on group rides. So I've a lot of experience, not just leading rides, but taking part in them as well. Um, and it's a long time ago now, but. Uh, This is why I feel I can um, I can talk about cycling and in particular um, tactics and racing because I've been there and done it myself as well as um, you know I'm I'm an ex-organizer of events so I have a pretty good handle on what it takes and what's needed. I worked for British Cycling for quite a while. Oh, that's, uh, there we go. So you can see me back on the road. I'll just make sure my cave is, is showing, which it is. And then we'll get back to the action and join. There we go. So let's, come on, let's join the action. Yep. So we, we're back in time to watch Mr. Talbot coming into the finish. It would have been a, a real travesty had I not done so. Well, there goes Talbot with two kilometres to go now, coming into the finish. And then we'll catch up with uh, with Bradley, who's a further couple of kilometres behind. And that will be everybody home. I say everybody. We've, <laughs> we've only had one, two, three finishers. Um, which is a bit of a shame, really. So, yeah. Ah. 
I ride in the Netherlands, me here, so um, <clears throat> people say, oh, it's flat and it's boring. But to be honest, it's anything but. It's flat, yes, uh, unless you go to the south. But it's certainly not boring. Uh, riding in the Netherlands with the wind uh, is as hard as riding in my home county of Yorkshire with the hills. Uh, in fact, probably harder. I, I'm a good hill climber, but I struggle against the wind. But it does make you stronger. It's uh, it's pretty hard work, um, and I can understand why the Dutch, um, why the Netherlands produces such good cyclists and such strong cyclists, because it's it's not an easy place to cycle and to ride. It takes an awful lot of, uh, of effort to, uh, to stay at a decent pace on a club ride even, um, <coughs> because of the wind. It took me a bit of getting used to and when I first arrived here in the Netherlands uh, I was coming off the back of my illness anyway so even my partner Hilke could ride uh, the bike paths much faster than I could and I had to basically uh, build up my strength and build up my riding and that took me uh, took, took me a little while took me about a year before I was riding anything decent <clears throat> and then I went on to uh, uh, to riding on Swift and then the rest is history I broke the Swift distance record I became an ultra endurance uh, cyclist and uh yeah i i i was pretty pretty amazed by what i managed to pull off let's uh, get mr talbot coming into the finish given where i'd come from and and you know the illness so and it looks like we've got a late joiner joining as well, Giraudis, but we've got Talbot coming into the finish here now. And then we'll flip back and see who's behind him. But uh, that's a good ride, sir. Well done. I'm really pleased to see you finish and you're sticking with it. So let's find out who's next. There's Giraudis. He's just joined. I don't know why we've only such a short distance to go, but uh, we've got five kilometres for Mr. Bradley. Now I know for a fact Mr. Bradley has joined many of his rides, so um, I'm really, really happy to uh, to watch him into the finish. And this has been a good effort. I know he hasn't covered the full distance, but uh, 44 kilometres he'll have done by the time we finish, and that's no mean feat. 45 kilometres actually, so yeah. Yeah, I've just messaged, uh, just put in the chat. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Mihe. I, I rode through um, Belgium twice during the, uh, the TCR, Transcontinental Race. Um, and during training for the Transcontinental Race, I, I rode there quite a bit. So I'm, I'm well familiar um, with the uh, with the area and i love it to be honest i i the, the only thing i think the belgium roads are absolutely abysmal i have to say that um certainly the sections uh as you come over the border but um 
Yeah, I, I love the riding there. I, I have to say, um, one of my, one of my favourite places. Uh, I didn't so much enjoy uh, the rural parts of France. Um, you know, northern France, when you when you get sort of like um, a bit further south, then it gets better. But northern France is a bit grim. But Belgium, yeah, I, I like it. I like it a lot. And I love hills. I'm, I'm, I am. I'm currently around the 63 kilo mark, which, for me, is heavy. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm a lightweight, and I'm a climber. Um, I'm just not fit at the moment. I, you know, I, I've not really doing enough cycling to, uh, to be as fit as I like to be. And at my age as well, I, <coughs> I suffer a lot with. Uh, with cold and this lot from the children I don't have a very good immune system thanks to uh, um, previous illnesses with the cancer so um, I tend to get every cold that's going <coughs> and you can hear I'm, I'm full up with uh, with phlegm at the moment which is why I've not been, I've, I've not ridden now for almost two weeks and I'm missing it um, for me, that's a long time. Um, I, I miss it when I'm not on the road and I'm not riding. Uh, obviously, I say on the road. I ride in real life because I have to take the children to school and this. But uh, where I really push myself is when I'm riding virtually. And I just haven't been able to do that with this cold. Uh, it's too dangerous if the... Uh, if I get a chest infection, I'm in real difficulty. So I have to be careful, but uh, <laughs> soft pave, yeah, okay. You got more potholes in Belgium than any other country I've ridden in, but that's that's an oh sorry, no, that's not true. UK uh, potholes are probably worse than the Belgian potholes <laughs> but it's a close call <laughs> yeah but one thing I will say about the uh, the Belgian roads it improves your riding certainly your bike handling and finding a good line I mean uh, yeah I mean trying to find a good line is uh, is a skill. A nice one to have actually. So I'll see you tomorrow in the race. Uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be brutal. I really think the uh, the tactics are going to uh, to make it a tough day out tomorrow. I think both OTR and Racy or Razzy or Racing are going to be uh, doing battle for their respective leaders. You've got Jan Decker, who's like uh, the top rider in Razzy or Racing or Racy or Racing, and you've got uh, Maxime Turcot, who's currently leading the standings. And there I am on the road currently leading the standings um, in this series in the race series and he's going to take some stopping so team tactics tomorrow definitely um, will determine the outcome of the final series but for riders further down the field it's going to be no less easy because uh, I think groups are going to be all over the road it's going to be well splintered tomorrow you're going to find friendships happening where groups come together and uh, you're going to find groups split apart. <clears throat> it's almost 2,000 metres of climbing uh, over the 99 kilometres. And so you're looking at four hours, 
for some of the races. I think the top boys will probably finish it in three, but I think towards the back end of the field you're gonna you're gonna be looking at four hours. So not an easy finish for the majority of riders tomorrow. <coughs> And I do think you'll see quite a few dropping out as well. Um, what I what I really hope doesn't happen is I hope you don't get team members who go like crazy and then decide to drop out <coughs> because I don't think that's fair on the uh, you know on the uh, riders that are doing the full distance. By all means use team tactics to rip each other apart but those team tactics should be fair it shouldn't be a case of you know bringing riders in just to ride short sections and then uh, dropping out and there you can see the uh, the red kite coming up with the banner so one kilometer to go when he gets underneath it And then it's all down to tomorrow. Yeah, finishing just finishing tomorrow will be a big, um, a big up. Um, I think anybody that finishes tomorrow, you know, really will deserve the utmost credit, and I will give it to them. I will follow every rider finishing tomorrow so i hope to see you in that list but thanks for watching my stream really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me in the live chat as i say in in future broadcasts i'm going to be showing some of the live chat on screen so that people can see who I'm talking to and what we're discussing. Um, still need to sort that out yet. <clears throat> but that's coming along with the other improvements I've made. Um, but if you haven't already, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Let's grow the channel. I put in a lot of work for RGT so all I ask is a little bit of uh, support to help me grow the channel and continue uh, my race coverage well event coverage not just race coverage so Mr Bradley will have done 45 kilometers by the well just short of 45 by the time we get to the finish so this has been a good ride and thank you everybody for sticking with me and taking part <laughs> and there we go over the line so I'm gonna say goodbye stay safe everybody and if you haven't already done so check out some of my other videos in particular the previous race vid I'll get my words out in a minute the previous race videos of this series because they're pretty amazing some good tactics and some good racing and on that note I'm going to say good night and we'll catch you later <laughs>